Hey folks, so let's talk about adding ABS brakes or anti-lock brakes to a bike that never came with ABS as standard. I really wanted my bike to be a lot safer in the crazy local traffic we have here where I live now and uh, after a lot of searching I, I found some really great kits online and I've just finished successfully installing one. For sure I'm just showing you it can be done. This isn't a, a like a guaranteed exact tutorial for every bike out there on the market. Uh, I mean for a start these kits are for bikes with front and rear disc brakes. There might be some out there that'll handle drum brakes but I, I didn't see any. Okay so I installed the ABS brake kit onto my bike. You know, it's known locally here as a Rusi Classic 250. Uh, the same bike, which is a Yingang 90 model, is sold in a few different regions around the world, like it's the PETA Cafe Racer in Europe and I think the uh, GPX Legend in Thailand and Malaysia. Uh, the kit wasn't listed for being for my model, so you know, really this was just a bit of a test by me to see if I could get one that works. So first off, I'm not going to be covering off the complete history and the benefits of an ABS system on a motorbike. There's plenty of great YouTube videos out there will fill in those details really, really well. In fact, I found a pretty good concise one here and, and I'll post that link uh, in the description below for you. Okay, so let's take a look through the ABS kits online. Uh, you'll find different options when you start to go searching. Let's see what kits to look for and what ABS options not to consider. And then finally, uh, what kit did I get? You really need to make sure that what you are looking at really is an ABS kit. Any real ABS system will have an electronic control unit or the ECU and a pump. And it's usually going to be combined in one piece now like in this picture. And if you do want real ABS features, you're going to have to pay for it. I'll be careful what I say here because they are selling these valves that they attach to your brake calipers on Amazon and AliExpress etc. And they also call them ABS. Well, you get what you pay for with them. Go watch some YouTube reviews of them and you can decide for yourself if it looks like they work or not. Anyway, so I spent quite a while uh, looking for an aftermarket ABS kit on eBay and Amazon, Lazada and Shopee. And all I came up with was those cheap caliper valves and uh, until I put in the right wording and then finally I found some that looked interesting on AliExpress you know, amongst the hundreds of wrong results that you tend to get on there. And when you do start going through the search results look really carefully. Uh, first eliminate anything cheap and nasty and even then some of the correct kits aren't complete which is why you'll see such a big variation in these prices. The one on the right here is either not a complete set or it has some options that you need to select when you're checking out so you have gotta be careful okay so before you rush off and buy the first kit that you see you're gonna to need to do a, a little homework before you can choose the kit and the seller you're gonna buy it from I mean this isn't just a sale where you buy a single item it is a kit and one part of it the, the sensor discs will very likely be custom made for you uh, by the seller or his agent you want to find out how quickly the seller asks and answers questions so you got an idea how long all of this would take so it's not just price you're interested in. You're going to need to tell them the model of your bike so they can see if they think that their kit is going to work on it. And you really need to make sure that that kit is complete and the one that you're going to order does include those sensor discs, the ones they'll make up for you. Because an ABS system won't work without the sensor discs and you need to ask them to make sure it includes it. Anyway, uh, the kit I bought was the one that had the best price including delivery and the seller was really responsive with questions and answers and, and that made me feel really confident they were going to help me out if there were any problems with the installation which you know turns out to be I think the first I know of uh, for my model. Now you can see here they sold the kit in two forms one without the sensor discs and one with the discs that one's called option B. Naturally of course I went ahead and bought option B with the discs that kit worked out to be about 230 US dollars thereabouts at that time uh, not including delivery yeah I know to some people 230 US dollars plus delivery is, is going to sound like a lot of money and you know for some people it is but I look at it uh, this way the ABS option on most new bikes usually cost between say 500 to a thousand dollars and I know that even a, a one day stay in hospital will cost a lot more than 230 dollars so I'd rather use the ABS to reduce the risk of those hospital bills if I possibly can. 
Okay, finally, let's look at what the kit that I bought included. Firstly, it has the all-important ECU pump combo module. That's the brains and the engine of the whole system. Then we have the wiring harness to connect that and integrate it into the bike's electrical system. We also have the ABS light. Uh, that flashes for the ABS status and it shows any error codes. We also have the wheel sensors, some brake hoses, which they seem to have forgotten to show in this picture by the look of it. And finally, those custom-made sensor or speed disks that we need. You know, for some bikes, uh, those might be off-the-shelf items, but they weren't for my model bike, so they had to custom make them. And this shows the parts list of what they deliver. Uh, I've also just noticed that it even uh, looked like this one's wrong because it doesn't list the four brake hoses. So maybe this is a list for that option A, but uh, it's once again, it's best that you ask the seller to check that out. Now you notice that it lists some Yamaha, Honda and Benelli models that the, the kits will work with, as well as other 12 volt bikes with brake signal. Well, that other covers my bike and I guess most road bikes that are 12 volt and have a rear brake light and of course uh, front and rear disc brakes as I've mentioned before so look for that other when you're comparing the AliExpress kits to see which ones might work with your model. Okay after you order the kit you will most likely be contacted by the seller to provide them with some measurements of your front and rear disc mounting holes, the holes in your discs. Uh, if your bike is on that list of Honda, Yamaha and Benelli models, maybe they, you won't, but I'm guessing they will always ask you just to be safe. My seller told me what measurements they needed to be able to custom make those sensor slash speed discs, and they actually got me to supply them some photos just to make it easier. Now please, please follow their instructions carefully and be as exact as you can. Uh, this is very important if you really want a smooth installation. So off they go and custom make those sensor discs and a few weeks later after ordering three I think it was my parcel arrived by courier. After I opened it I then noticed that the kit came with only a Chinese installation manual and this is when you already get to find out how good the support is that you get from your seller. Mine emailed me an English PDF version of that manual within a few hours so it all was good. So obviously now you should check over what they delivered to make sure that you got the complete kit. I then realised that this kit came with two sensor mounts. One was flat and one was an angled or bent mount. Uh, that might suit some bikes, but it didn't suit mine when I looked into it. So it was time to contact the seller again. Uh, I needed to get a, a spare pair of mounting brackets, another angle and another flat. And they're sending those over to me now. While I wait for those new mounts to arrive, uh, I didn't want to wait a few weeks to do the install, so I measured the angle bracket and I drew that up and 3D printed a, a temporary angle bracket that I could use right now. I mean, it's not load bearing, so this ABS plastic mount that I printed does the job fine until those new ones arrive. Now, my Rusi friends, um, you should ask your seller to include a spare pair of those mounts when you order the kit, just to save time later. And finally, it's time to start that install. So step one, of course, is read the flaming manual carefully. Yes, the English translation may not be great in some places, but anything you aren't sure about, email your seller and ask them about it. Get them to explain it. I sent mine a few emails and I got pretty good responses pretty quickly, actually. I was really happy with their support. The next thing I did was to get those sensor slash speed disks uh, mounted onto my front and rear brake discs. Okay, so the wheels need to come off to do that, so it's a lot easier with two guys. So uh, I ended up taking my bike back uh, to my bike store and I got them to do this part for me because it's a lot easier for them. And this is also where you're going to find out how accurate your measurements were that you sent to the seller. And my measurements for the front disc were out. They were about one millimeter too small. So my tire guy marked out with a pen what adjustment needed to be made and he grabbed out his Dremel grinder and he fixed that in about 10 minutes. You know, It's an easy fix if you need it, but you know, exact measuring is just a lot better. So now with those sensor discs mounted, it's uh, back home and it's time to strip the bike down. You're going to need to spend a bit of time deciding where to mount that ECU pump module and seeing where you will need to route your brake hoses so off comes the fuel tank, the seat and the side cover so we've got good access. Instead of the usual two brake hoses that you have on a motorbike, you now have four hoses as we're 
plumbing in the ABS module in between the master cylinders and the brake calipers. So you may spend quite some time deciding where to fit this ECU pump and making sure that those hoses give enough slack uh, for your steering and your suspension to work properly still. So I bolted the brake hoses onto the pump and on my Rusi I ended up trying two different locations. The first was up high where the airbox is but that was too far back on the bike and the, the front hoses were too tight for the steering to work properly so uh, instead I found that the ECU pump fitted nicely uh, between the airbox and the starter motor and all the hoses reached fine from there. You really want to mount the ECU pump securely so it doesn't move around or rattle at all. You don't want the wiring harness or the hoses working loose. My kit came with a great universal mounting bracket that I bent to the shape that I needed so I could mount it nice and securely. With that ABS pump now mounted, we can remove the original brake hoses and run those new hoses through and connect them to the master cylinders and to the brake calipers. If you do this carefully and quickly, you won't end up with a huge mess of spilled brake fluid, but just to be safe for your paintwork, make sure you cover it all up while you're trying. Now we can start on wiring in the new ABS system. The first step is the ABS light. This indicator light shows the status of the ABS system and it flashes an error code if there's any system faults. You want to mount that near your gauges where you can easily see it. Of course to do the wiring is going to be a big help if you can get a hold of the wiring diagram for your bike. That way you're not going to need to identify the bike wires with some test equipment like I ended up doing. Your kit is going to come with some wiring instructions of course and these are the instructions for my kit. The translation was a little bit ambiguous so I sent a few emails to my supplier to work it all out. They also sent me a better diagram that helped quite a lot. For my Rusi Classic 250 friends, after some trial and error and some new translations, that all came down to these connections shown here being made. You might want to pause this one to have a look at it. And same again for my Rusi friends, tapping into the front brakes, I did that under the fuel tank. Uh, are using a, a vampire tap into the original black wire that takes power to the front brake switch and then for the rear brakes just follow the wires up from the rear brake switch to that connector under the seat and tap into the green and yellow wire that goes to the rear brake light. With all the electricals all now wired in we want to mount those probes or those sensors on their brackets and attach those brackets to the bike so that the probes sit very close to those sensor discs. You know those discs that I got mounted at the bike tire store. Now for my kit they need to be mounted so they sit around about 0.75 millimeters very very close to and above the surface of those discs. Now this might take some time for you to adjust of course. For the rear probe on my Rusi I had to drill a small hole in my swing arm and then I used Loctite on the mounting bolt. Same again, the front probe and bracket need to be positioned and mounted that same 0.75 millimeters above the surface of the sensor disc on the front brakes this time. On my Rusi, the front was pretty easy. There was no drilling. I just needed to use the mudguard bolts to connect it all. Oh, and one important note on those probes, and, and check your manual for your kit uh, for this. They can only be mounted in certain directions or they just won't work. My manual showed the correct directions that could be mounted and they're shown here on the left on this slide and then the sensor directions or alignments that won't work. Remember, RTFM, read the flame and manual. So finally, we're nearly done with the installation. We need to bleed those brakes properly now. You will need to go and buy some new brake fluid and probably twice as much as you would normally get. You've got to remember that we just added four new longer and empty brake hoses and a new and empty ABS pump. So we'll be adding more brake fluid than usual. The manual also suggests turning the ignition on and off a few times, which will initialize the ABS ECU pump a few times and suck some of that fluid through to make life a bit easier. And there you go. The kit's installed, it's mounted, routed, it's wired, and the brakes are bled. Now you need to test it, and you've got to calibrate it if your kit has a calibration procedure. But before anything, you've got to just test these brakes to see if you've bled them properly. Even push and roll the bike a little somewhere safe. Make sure that the basic braking is okay and that you did bleed them properly. 
if they do stop okay now you need to find a safe area maybe a, like a big car park or a quiet long safe street to calibrate the ABS system again go and read your manual for the calibration procedure if there is one I don't know that all systems will have one this slide shows the quick and easy calibration for my ABS system and it only took about two minutes or so to complete once you've calibrated the ABS system and that is if yours has that option you want to safely test this kit properly again find somewhere safe and quiet to do this you're going to be hitting the brakes hard to try to get the bike to lock up its brakes on a skid you need to see that the ABS stops this locking up and you don't want someone driving behind you to run into you from behind so be careful now the good thing is even if the ABS function fails to work or you didn't correctly wire it up or anything your original standard basic disc brakes should still work as long as you bled them properly my kit makes a quick buzzing sound when you turn on the bike that's as the ECU pump initializes listen for that to see if your kit does that too check for leaks to make sure you don't have any hoses that aren't tightened up properly and look for any error codes on your ABS light if you have one and if all of that is okay now you want to go on your first test ride you want to ride straight ahead and ride slowly let's say 20 kilometers an hour if that's safe and apply the rear brakes first hard and fast if the ABS system is working you should get no lockup you shouldn't get any skidding you should feel the ABS system modulating under the under your foot on the brake pedal it's like a pulsing feeling if it's working if that worked go a little faster try those rear brakes again only once you're happy that the rear brakes are working and therefore the ABS system is working you want to try the fronts do the same sequence on your front brakes now but even more carefully only do it straight ahead and do it slow to start with you can have many more accidents with your brakes on the front than you can with the back so if your kit is working properly you should hear a buzz of the pump when you turn on the bike provided yours does that you should feel the pulsating foot pedal and brake lever when you brake really hard and fast you should see no error messages or ABS indicator lights flashing that there's any errors with the system and of course you should get no skids or no lockups on a dry and clean road if yours did work fine in your tests well you could try testing on a gravel road too but be extra extra careful a lot of these kits are standard like mine they have no modes or settings for off-road or gravel roads they'll still work but less successfully you will feel probably a series of small fast little skids one after the other just because there's gravel under the tires so be careful until you get used to that and test on slower speeds and with extra care but it is worth testing if you have the chance just so you got some experience with it okay finally just a quick summary I'm happy to say that there are real ABS kits available that you can fit to some non ABS bikes I really wasn't sure until I did my research and then bought this and experimented my kit works really well I've got no lockups no matter how hard I try on sealed roads I'm really happy with it these kits really only support bikes with front and rear disc brakes that's unless you can find a kit that specifically says otherwise that it supports a rear drum brake don't always go with the cheapest seller find the one that has the best and fastest support as well it's just as important as the price really make sure you're accurate with those measurements for those probe wheels save yourself some grief I really didn't need any special tools to fit this just some spanners some screwdrivers a brake bleed kit and some wire strippers and it really isn't that expensive and I think the money is really well spent if it means that you avoid crashing and any sort of stay in hospital I think it pays for itself okay so where to from here I mean I'd really next I'd like to be able to show a real-world video test of this ABS kit option you know showing my ABS equipped Rusi versus a standard non ABS Rusi side by side yeah you know, so I'll ask for some volunteers here in my local area if they want to help out, help me out with that one this is a technical but important option for our basic bikes I think so hopefully this hasn't been too long and boring if you've gotten this far to the end I hope this information is of interest to some of you guys and it helps a few of you to make your bikes safer anyway ciao for now guys